Hi, this is Holly Homer, and thank you so much for following us around this today. <laughs> we had a little <laughs> bit of technical difficulties to even get us on the air, but thankfully, Lori was able to start it on her um, page, and this will go to her YouTube channel, Lori Turp. And um, so I wanted to talk a little bit before we get to introducing Lori, who's who's hosting this today. <laughs> Welcome. Um, <laughs> but, um, cause last week we started this conversation about blog monetization, but Lori wasn't here and she is the queen of blog monetization. So I wanted to make sure that we started this conversation over again a little bit this week, cause there's so much we can learn about it and get Lori involved in well. So Lori, um, why don't you tell us a little, well, who you are and the fabulous things you do and then kind of how you got started with this blog monetization stuff. Okay, um, I'm Laurie with TipJunkie.com. Um, I feature uh, creative women through their tutorials and products. And I, like most of you, started out on a blogspot.com blog and um, just, you know, over time realized the amazing um, possibilities on making money online. And I love Google, Google is my biggest client. And so I make sure that they are ha very happy and get lots of exposure on my site um, because they just pay me on the 16th of every month and I don't have to blog about them and I don't have to invoice them. It just happens. And so that's kind of what I do and where I make the majority of my money. Well, I think that really um, speaks to like kind of the difference of what kind of a mindset change where all, where you go from you know working for people you know writing about their product you know doing a sponsored post and that kind of stuff and then you get to a point where it's like oh my gosh that's so much work for the little bit of nothing yeah. and so I love this idea of passive income, passive income. <laughs> Woo! and this is where you get to say your 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 famous line oh. I love passive income so much I could French kiss it like I love passive income. <laughs> I love it I love doing nothing and just getting paid and I love the idea of that and and that is why I've been working on my blog over the last few months to really build up the passive income because it's so true when you can just sit back and let things happen and not be worried about the 70,000 things you have to do for a certain sponsor or advertiser life is so much easier <laughs> it just kind of clears your head and opens your mind up to doing what you really love and to focus on what you're really great at, which is why we all started blogging to begin with. I think that's so true. Like that's, you know, it does, it frees you up to be your, pa you know, do you walk, talk about your passions again. Um, whereas before I really felt like I was working for someone all the time. Yeah. And I, it really occurred to me once, because um, I run several sites, but most of them have other contributors. And then what I was finding was I was doing all the sponsored posts. Like so when it push came to shove, I was doing all the you know kind of the work and I hadn't written anything non-sponsored in so long a long time. Well, and it gets to the point where you're pimping other people out before yourself and that becomes a problem. Right. So let's talk a little bit about like just the starting of getting started on some blog monetization from a passive income. Like where did you start and you know how did, what did that look like for you? Okay, first I started um, really kind of at the beginning. I realized what I am good at and what I am not good at. Because I think us as women, we are constantly bombarded and trying to maximize our weaknesses instead of maximizing our strengths. And so I realized that I can build a page view. Mm -hmm. That is something that I'm kind of good at. So I can basically, what that means is I can rewrite content um, to where Google will read it. So basically Google is just a computer, it's just a robot. And so it can't read images. Mm -hmm. It cannot read videos. <laughs> it cannot read a lot of the things that we kind of expect it to read. And so what that means is you just use specific keywords in specific places so that um, when people are looking for the information, your, your article comes up first. And you not only want it to come up first, but you want it to come up eight times first. So <laughs> Right? Not to be greedy or anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, for 
instance, um, just a perfect example this morning is um, I'm working with a new um, carpenter. And so I was Googling him online to figure out what his digital footprint is. And there are 10 pages of um, companies with his exact business name, but he's not one of them. Yeah, and I think us as bloggers, you know, like we chose the name of our blog and what we're blogging about without even thinking about keyword searches or what people are looking at, looking for. And so it's one of those things you almost have to work backwards for at this point now that we are where we are. Absolutely. So I think the first thing to start out is know what you're good at and what you're not good at. If you are not good at building a page view, then you are probably going to be making your money in other ways than Google AdSense ads. Well, and then I think the other thing is, is you might look at your Google Analytics and see where you're successful in this area already. Exactly. You should know what your top 10 to top 20 posts are mm -hmm. because that is most likely what's making 80% of your income online. And so you need to blog more about that. <laughs> you need to put those posts up on maybe your sidebar repost them, and by reposting them, I mean just change the date that they are scheduled to post, not um, saving them into draft or um, copying and pasting I them. think this is a really, this is something that I get questions about all the time, is it's fine to change the date and put it back on your front page, you know, today, but what you don't want to do is schedule it for five days for now because when that happens it pulls it off for and like if that's something that you're getting hits from you're gonna lose all those hits for those five days that it's scheduled it does because it goes in back into draft mode mm -hmm. um, and so if you reschedule something you want to schedule it right then at that moment and you do not want to touch the URL mm -hmm. URLs people don't understand that's cash mm -hmm. so broken URLs it's no money. <laughs> <laughs> Working URLs are cash. So like, and I do this all the time, um, kind of because you've helped me out in this area, just a little. <laughs> but um, where you go in and, you know, if you have a, have a post that's doing relatively well, but you think you can do a little bit better, is you can go in and make sure that what you're saying in that first paragraph makes sense with what people are looking for when they're when they're finding your post and so and then republishing it exactly so the very first paragraph of your post should be what the whole entire post is going to be about so when you sit down to write you want to think okay if my neighbor if I had to explain this post to my neighbor next door what would I tell her mm -hmm. and that is what you want to do you want to explain your post from beginning middle and end and what the, it should only be about one topic, and that one topic should be in the first 100 characters of um, your first sentence, preferably the first thing you write down. Well, and I think it makes uh, sense because you would want to summarize it for a reader, but you also want to summarize it for the robot that's coming across looking for specific keywords. Yeah. So, and, um, and you want to summarize it for people like me who are dying to feature your amazing content. But mm -hmm. if we have to read, you know, 500 words to even understand what it is you're trying to tell us, then we can't feature you. You've made it too hard. Yeah, and I think it, in my brain, I kind of think of it as like the summary tweet. <laughs> you know, like 140 <laughs> characters to tell, you know, to get people like, oh, this is what I'm looking for. Exactly, perfect. And the other thing I think is really interesting is, um, is you know, I know that one of the other things that Google looks for besides what the post is about, but how long people stayed on your site when they found, when they clicked through for that information, because they can say, oh, that is relevant or that's not relevant. Exactly. And so you're probably wondering, well, how do you keep them on the site? Mm -hmm. You do that through linking to your other blog posts on the same topic. And so that way you're not losing them within the first 15 seconds, which will just look like a bounce off into outer space. And you don't get a whole lot of credit or clout in that when, when you're not keeping the person to read to the bottom. Exactly. So your blog post needs to start with text first. Do not start with an image because then Google is um, looking at all that HTML code and not real text. Mm -hmm. So you want the description, a beautiful image, 
and then you can go into your spill. Mm -hmm. And so let, let's talk about how then that turned into cash for you. Like, you know, you, you found some success in these areas and then how did that, how do you get a check from Google each month? I get a check from Google each month by page views. So I can rock a page view. I basically, um, I do probably a minimum of five links to my other posts per post. Mm -hmm. And at the very end, people want to know more. You know, they've already taken the time to read your article. They love it. They're fantastic. And most people don't have a, a call to action item. And so you definitely want a call to action, whether that is here are three more posts that I wrote on the same topic that you're going to love. <laughs> Or, you know, sign up for my news feed or um, things that I even do is I even have a Facebook like button just right mm -hmm. there. Right. And I think one of the things that, you know, often gets lost in SEO is they think, you know, it's all keywords, all kinds of stuff. But the fact that you're putting that into a quality post, that people stick around and read and then click through to your other quality posts, that's really the key. And so we're talking about content, not just keywords. Absolutely. And one, another uh, little kind of trick of the trade that I've seen people doing for quite a while now is that they will take one beautiful image of another post and put it at the end of theirs mm -hmm. and says, hey, you know, here's another thing that you're going to love. A perfect example of that is I worked with a brand for, um, sorry, I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> Uh, I worked with a brand, um, a cleaning company, and when I first got pitched the idea, I was just like, oh my gosh, like cleaning stains are not sexy. <laughs> That's just straight up not fun, you know? And so after brainstorming this um, with a, a while with my agent, um, she came up with, well, hey, why don't you have a, a printable that lists all the common stains and how their products can get those out? Mm -hmm. Bam. So even a sponsored post can really bring you tons of passive income through your Google AdSense through page views. So what happened was is that little printable that I didn't want to do <laughs> has been downloaded, you know, a quarter of a million times. <sighs> and because it has the, that many downloads and that many page views, um, people are blogging about it and mm -hmm. referring their people about it. And then it's just all coming together and it's proving to Google that it is what it says it is, which is giving me more credibility on that specific topic. Well, and I think that brings up such a big point that like it's not something sexy, but people were looking for that information. Yeah. And then you provided it in a place that they could find it and print it and look what happened. And well, and it was a perfect match for my brand because mm -hmm. like, people love to print crap out. Right. <laughs> so if you can do that, if you can find the synergy between the company that you're working with and what mm -hmm. you do well, the passive income will happen. So I got paid by that company. I um, get my readers are happy with that quarter of a million downloads, and then I get paid for every single page view on my Google AdSense. So that right. revenue just keeps coming in. So let's talk a little bit about getting started with like Google AdSense. Um, it's a real simple thing. You just go sign up. Um, it'll take you two and a half minutes. And then what what size? Where have you found your best um, you know banner sizes and that kind of stuff? Where where do you place them on your site? The money maker is the three hundred by two fifty ad. So the pixels are three hundred by two fifty mm -hmm. above the fold. Okay. And the fold is basically where your um, computer screen ends. So mm -hmm. it needs to be, so when you pop up a screen, it needs to be on, you know, right there where you can see. Right. It. Are you using anything in your header? I have a, I do have a um, tower in my header. Mm -hmm. And then I also have a second 300 by 250 below the fold. Okay. But, um, you know, you're kind of gun shy at first when you put on Google AdSense. You think it looks ugly. You think your readers are going to be annoyed by it. I mean, there's kind of an emotional mm -hmm. um, detachment that you have to make where you decide, you know what, I'd rather get paid for what I do than have things pretty. <laughs> right. And I, I had that, like, oh, that angst when I redid the site to put the 
it's that header banner that just kills you at first. Yeah, and it may it's not for everybody, um, but if you can at least get that 300 by 250 above the fold on your sidebar, your life will change. Yeah, and I think that's a really good start, but I will have to say it was the header ad that made me a believer. <laughs> and then once I got the first check, I was like, holy crap, who cares? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, so Google will allow you to have up to three ads at a time. Um, it's interesting. I was just on somebody's site the other day, and they had a ad in between every single post that was truncated. Mm -hmm. So they probably had eight ads on their site, and the the thing that's so hysterical is she's only getting paid for three. Right, right. No, yeah, don't do more than three because it's, there's no point. Like, and on the third one, it sh probably shouldn't be Google. It should probably be like a value click or a double click or a different um, combination of ad networks. Yeah, and once you kind of, like, my first um, step into all this was through Google AdSense, and then you start learning the language, and then you can talk relatively you know, smartly with these other networks and stuff, <laughs> you know, so you're not like going to them going, I have no idea what, you know, I can at least say, you know, this is what I'm getting from Google, what can you, you know, if it's better than that, then let's talk. If it's not better than that, let's not even have that conversation. Well, and let's do a little myth buster right now. People want to be on these really, you know, high polluting, prestigious ad networks, okay, and they're boasting $10 CPMs. Um, which is, you know, $10 per thousand uh, page views or, or page loads, to mm -hmm. be technical. Um, but the problem is, is that you only get paid $10 per IP address, which is per reader, per 24 hours. So right. what happens if that reader is on your site for 20 pages? Right. Which you, you hope. That's what you want. want. Yeah, and, so, then, and that reader is likely going to be more likely to click through one of those ads because you're giving them exactly what they want. That's the other thing that, you know, you get paid for those click-throughs on Google. Yeah, so the myth is don't worry about those exclusive ad networks. Go on to Google and get paid for every single click what you're worth rather than the promise of maybe a $10 CPM later because right. I can tell you that those backfills are 10 cents. I mean, people are just getting creamed. I think it's an injustice that's happening. They're getting mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I, I I think the the what we're saying today is just go try it out for a little while. Yeah. You know, go see how see how it fits you. You know, see if it's um, and you know once you build up traffic in one area or the other option is if you have one or two posts that are doing massive amounts of um, traffic through search engines and you don't want to put a bunch of ads on your blog go put, insert an ad at the bottom of those two posts you know because then you'll get paid for at least the, where people are finding you here's my thing if you could do that post once and get paid over and 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 over again <laughs> for the next five years, would you do it? Yes. Of course you would. And the only way to get paid that way is to have an ad network on your sidebar. And I can tell you, it's lovely. They are the best clients because they don't make you change your wording on your post. <laughs> They don't complain. They don't worry about the FTC or disclaimers or, or invoicing. It just shows up on the 16th of every month. It's I love that. <laughs> You're already doing the work. You might as well get paid twice for it. Well, Lori, I really appreciate your time today. This has been a, a little adventure because we had a little technical difficulties to begin with, but we'll be on track for next Wednesday again at 1030. If you have questions, feel free to leave them underneath um, in the comments. I'll check everywhere we've posted this today um, for comments for next time. That will It was too scattered to figure out that for this time. But please leave your, um, leave your comments or questions, and we'll definitely address them in the future because I know this is such a big thing, and it really takes a while to change your thinking about, like, is this possible for me? Could I really be making money while I sleep? So yeah. well, I mean, it's something that people aren't talking about, you know, mm -hmm. and it really is the best way to get paid. Hand I down. completely agree. <laughs> so thank you so much, and we'll see everybody next Wednesday at ten thirty Central Time.